we're going to do number 5 from the 2008 Calc AB exam. And it is a slope field slash separable differential equation problem. Um, so we're given uh, the grid and we're told to create a slope field at the given point. So what I'm going to do is make a table of values here because it's not the easiest slope field in the world. So my x values are going to go um, down this column and the y values are going to go across. So for x I have negative 1, 1, and 2. Notice they avoid the issue of zero, um, which is good. They also tell you that x cannot be zero in the uh, problem statement. And then y is zero, one, and two. Make sure you get that right. If you're evaluating at the wrong points, you're just kind of doomed. Uh, if you look at the differential equation, the easiest thing to substitute in is y equals one, because when y is one, you get zeros across the board. Um, when y equals zero, you have negative one in the numerator. So negative one in the numerator and negative one squared gives you negative 1. Uh, negative 1 in the numerator and 1 squared gives you negative 1. And negative 1 in the numerator and a 2 squared gives you negative 1 fourth, which is going to be kind of tough to get on the uh, graph. Um, if we plug in 2 for y, we have 1 as our numerator. So it's 1 over 1, 1 over 1, and 1 over 4. Um, I'm going to fill in when y equals 1 right away because you go straight across with your horizontal line segments. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump to the column where um, x equals uh, 1, I guess, um, to try to get that slope of negative 1. Because at that point, I can aim for the point 0, 1. Um, and now what I'm going to do is at negative 1, I just need to be parallel to that. Um, so I, I think that's the easiest way to do that. And then at x equals 2, I need a slope of negative 1 fourth, so that's down one over four or up one and back four so I'm gonna to aim to aim at the point negative one one and do my best um, okay and I'm gonna do the same sort of thing here when uh, y equals two so I'm gonna start at x equals one and aim for the point uh, zero one then use a parallel line segment at uh, negative one two and then for this one I'm again gonna go down one back four so I'm aiming for the point negative one one and uh, that's not so bad. Next thing we have to do is uh, separate and integrate. So we know that um, f of 2 is 0. So uh, if this was 1, mi 1 minus y in the numerator, I would factor out a negative, but it's not. So I'm just going to separate like so. I'm using negative exponent there because it'll make it easier to find an antiderivative. Um, throw in some integral signs. On the left-hand side, I get the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 1. And that's going to be equal to, and then reverse the power rule, so plus 1 times the reciprocal, like that. And then don't forget plus c. Um, I like to exponentiate first before solving for c when I have a uh, natural log, because it takes care of the absolute value for you. Um, otherwise, you have to worry about you have the absolute value of y minus 1 equals something, and then do you want the positive part or the negative part? And then it gets a little confusing. Um, so now we need to solve for c. So we have this situation, and we know that it goes through the point 2, 0. So substituting in, we get this. Um, so what I'm going to do here is move the uh, 1 over, and then I'm also going to move the uh, e to the negative 1 half into the denominator, just to make it clearer that I need to cross multiply. So I end up with c is negative e to the 1 half. So that gives me um, this form of the solution which is fine, or you might prefer um, this form of the solution where you combine those exponents. Either way, that's what we were looking for. And uh, the last part is really just a limit. So um, I am asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, where y is the particular solution we found. Um, so that's really just the limit as x approaches infinity of this. And then that you can just kind of visually see that uh, 1 over x goes to 0. So that's just going to give me this as my limit. So I'm done. And in case you didn't follow that, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x approaches 0. So the exponent of e becomes just 1 half. Um, and that's the whole problem. I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.